بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد ان دس ورکس آف تصوف دیز آر دا ورڈس یو ور آلویز کم اکراس اینڈ یو ول سی دیز پریکٹسز ون از ذکر بل ضرب اینڈ ون از ذکر بل جہر ذکر بل جہر مینس میکنگ دا ریمبرنس آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی ود لاؤڈ وائز لا الہ الا اللہ ان سرف دن لا الہ الا اللہ دس از سری جہر ذکر And you would say, La ilaha illallah with a louder voice. And you would see this. This is a pattern. And zikr bi zarb means that you have to move, make a movement. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. So you have movements. And these movements are not random movements. They have a purpose. When you say, La ilaha, your, in, your intentions are, I'm taking everything besides Allah out of my heart, putting it where it belongs. Where it belongs? Behind my back. La ilaha. What belongs in the heart comes right in the heart. Illallah. Right? What belongs in the heart comes right back in the heart. Illallah. So with these movements, these are the thoughts I have. This, this is the intentions I make. So this is called Zikr Bil Jahar. To understand this, a lot of people would have an objection on these things. But they are very valid practices. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا That you have to make the remembrance of Allah a lot in abundance how much not 5,000 not 20,000 not 100,000 but a lot whatever that is and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that dhikr is better than jihad fighting in the path of Allah it's better than sadaqat and khairat this is how important the dhikr is so what is the purpose of dhikr is if this is so huge so dhikr is not just it should not be merely just taking the name of Allah alone right what is the maqsad what is the ultimate goal of zikr the ultimate goal of zikr is that you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart fully absorbed nothing else right like just like in the beginning of today's talk I said a good eye is an eye that can see 100% 20 by 20 is a good eye heart a good heart is the one that can pump the blood at a full capacity if your heart is not pumping full capacity then it's a defected heart if your eye is not seeing 100%, then it's a defected eye. So the heart that is not fully absorbed with the remembrance of Allah, it's a defective heart. Right? You have to make it a good heart, means there should be absolutely nothing. So these practices are going to lead you to that topic. You know, a lot of times you would see people making dhikr, la ilaha illallah, at the same time watching a movie, listening to jokes, talking on the phone and going this, right? So this is not doing the purpose. So this is stage number one. Stage number one is make a habit of tasbih. Right? This is called tambihul ghafilin. Tambihul ghafilin means awareness to the forgetful people. If you're a forgetful person, you have to have this. So this will remind you, why am I having this in my hand? Because I have to make zikr. So the first stage is dhikr bil lisan. Dhikr bil lisan, you start saying with the words. And the second thing is dhikr qalbi. Then you have to bring this in your heart. It should not be merely on your tongue it should slide down into the heart. And this is called zikr qalbi right? Here, you have to force your heart, make muraqabah, you have to bring thoughts that it is getting in my heart, like la ilaha illallah. Now you're forcing these thoughts into your heart, that everything outside of Allah is outside, and everything but Allah is in my heart. So you putting this, so you by force, by takalluf, isko by takalluf kehatein, by takalluf you are doing this, you are putting this in your heart. And then eventually, when Allah wants, whenever Allah wants to you, for this to come to you, it would become rasikh in your ilam, in your qalb, such that it would become hard for you to forget this. Right? Just like in the second stage, it was hard for you to put it, now it has become so hard for you to not do the dhikr of Allah, it has become your second nature. Right? And then, after this, there is a stage which is called fanafillah. Fanafillah is a stage where you are fully absorbed with the thoughts of Allah and now you do not depend on the tasbih. You do not depend on the words. You do not even depend on the dhikr. But Allah is taking the space in your heart and your thoughts are nothing but Allah. All you see days and nights and think and sleep and day is, your, is Allah. Have you seen people who are becoming doctors? Days and nights, they have only one thought. Sometimes they skip their meals because they have only one objective. I have to take this test and I have to have this many numbers. Right? These are majnu. Majnu is absorbed in the layla. He doesn't know anything. 
He doesn't know. He doesn't know when to eat and when not to eat, what to, where to go, where not to go, because he's so absorbed. And this is a common man's experience. When you're so busy in something, have you not seen that this person says something and means something else? You know, it happens. You know, Uthman radiallahu anhu, at the time that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, uh, he complained that Umar radiallahu anhu, or Umar radiallahu anhu complained that Uthman radiallahu anhu is not answering my salam. So the case went in the hands of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. It's like he called Uthman and he's like, why did you not answer? And he said, I don't even know if he has salam. What is it? Because his thoughts are not there. He's not there. His thoughts are somewhere else. So Ali radiallahu anhu, one time he got stuck with the arrow in his leg and he was injured. People are trying to take this out. He's like, you cannot come out. What, what to do? Someone said, and he said that when I go in the salah, try it then. Because he knew his salah, when he's in the salah, he's with Allah, he's nowhere else. He started his salah, people took it out after he finished the salah. What happened to the arrow? He taken out. I don't even feel it. This is what happens. This needs practice. So for that practice, Sufi Ikram, they have brought up these practices of zikr bil jahar and zikr bil zarb. Otherwise, by, if you do it silently, your heart is not going to attain it. Right? Because there are so many distractions in this world. You cannot sit tight for 20 minutes and not check your message on the phone. It's impossible. This is how much distracted we are. So, these are the means to attain that. Right? These are not, uh, you should not be looking the references in the sunnah. A lot of people say, where is it, the reference of this in the sunnah? How would you get the reference of that in the sunnah? Right? Where this is an outside practice to bring something. You, have you seen a person doing the hifz of the Quran, tahfizul Quran? The students, when they're saying, La, uh, they say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, Rahim, they're moving like this. Yeah, Tahfid al Quran is Sunnah. But moving like this is not part of the Sunnah. Right? This is a practice a student finds itself easy for him that he does it and it, it helps him memorize the Quran. And nobody calls it a bid'ah. In the same way, Zikr bil Jahar. Zikr bil Jahar is from Sunnah. Right? People, uh, it is, uh, is it a prophetic tradition, you know, uh, the dhikr bil jahar. There are a hadith to prove it, but sometimes dhikr bil uh, dharb is a practice of Sufia to bring the purpose of dhikr, which is filling your heart with the dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so that there is nothing else in, uh, in the heart. And when you attain that, this is called kamil uh, heart. This is the qalb salim illa manatallahu bi qalbin salim. So this was my topic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our participation.